Hello everybody and welcome to the 20,000 subscriber special as voted on by everyone on my community page over on YouTube. First of all, thank you so much for helping me get to 20,000 subscribers. That really genuinely means so much to me. Um, this YouTube channel has been an incredibly fulfilling project for me to work on. Um, I do it because I love it. Uh, I wouldn't do it if I didn't. Uh, there's no real money to be made here. My personal videos aren't really monetized anymore, and I do that so I have more freedom to use like copyrighted material and like the music and stuff. Especially when Sam the VA mod or IQ Wrestler, they have a cool idea for something that uses copyrighted music, and I want them to be able to explore that. And I think it looks cooler in my videos. Um, but it has this channel has opened a lot of doors for me, given me a lot of opportunities in and out of the wrestling industry. And I'm incredibly grateful for that and incredibly grateful to all of you for being a part of that, supporting that, and showing any sort of interest in my work and in my opinions. You guys rock so much. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. There are so many people to thank who have been part of the channel. Obviously, I named Sam and IQ, um, but there's just so many. Um, yeah, you guys are the best. Uh, you all know who you are. <laughs> that sounds like a cop-out, but... It's true. Uh, thank you again. So, down to business. We're here to react to the top 100 matches of 2023 as compiled by Voices of Wrestling. This is a sort of like uh, consensus type deal where they gather ballots and votes from uh, various members of the pro wrestling media, content creators, writers, critics, reporters, all of that kind of thing. Um, and then they use a point system to determine a list ranking. And I did this once in 2021. I didn't do it in 2022 because, um, well, feedback wasn't great for the first video I did. Mo I think mainly because I disagreed with the match of the year pick. And that's fine. I don't mind people who disagreed with that particular opinion. Um, I don't think this was clear maybe it didn't come off this way in the last video but me doing this sort of reaction and saying x match should be higher or lower this is not me sort of attacking or trying to invalidate anyone else's ballot there are too many of you for me to just invalidate right out uh that that just doesn't work it would not be able to be it, it would not make sense at all when i say something should be higher or lower i am I am basically referencing the way that the match of the year list looks in my head, and that is my own personal neuroses, psychoses, opinion, whatever you want to call it. Um, so there is no objective answer. There is none. Even uh, the list that's presented as it is, there is no uh, purely perfect way to gather a consensus. And I'm not saying that to roast Voices of Wrestling or any other project that does this type of voting system. It just means that something as subjective, varied, and beautiful as professional wrestling is, you just can't systemize it in a truly ideal, pure way. We can get close and we can agree on a sort of democratic system um, to come to a sort of public consensus. And I think that Voices of Wrestling, what they do, is about as close as we can get to that kind of thing, all right? So they are the best option in terms of just gathering as many opinions as possible and collating the aggregated results of that. Um, so yeah, once again, just want to put it out there. No shade on anyone's ballots, your opinions. I will be disagreeing with the placement of some matches. I will be saying things might be overrated in my opinion. I may say that some things are underrated in my opinion, but that's because I'm me. I have my thoughts about these matches, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to share some of those thoughts in a sort of unscripted format um, without the pressure of having to produce a whole video essay. And I've already done my talking about all my favorites, please do check out my 2023 The Year's Best in Wrestling. It's an hour and 30 minutes long. There you go. There's all my thoughts, all my favorites. Uh, so let's talk about some of the other stuff that I haven't been able to cover. Maybe why or why not. I agree on where it is, why I like it, maybe why I don't. 
let's get into it. So first of all, I just wanted to show you guys the ballot that I submitted to this year's Voices of Wrestling Match of the Year um, project. Um, I did a personal rule where I didn't want to include anything from AEW, the WWE, or Bushi Road promotions, simply because those are the general favorites of voters in the Voices of Wrestling. Um, and that just means that all the favorites from those particular promotions, they're going to get their place on the list. They're going to show up no matter what, regardless of how I order them. And really, I'm just sort of fighting for like a couple places on the list, or maybe even not. The voting pool is broad enough that that wouldn't even... It might not even have been a factor. I wanted to prioritize getting matches from promotions that don't typically get that kind of attention. Uh, and here is what I submitted. Number one, my match of the year, both on this ballot and in my personal video, Takuya Nomura versus Fuminori Abe from We Are the Fighting Detectives. Number two, Anthony Henry versus Adam Priest from Action Lords of Chaos. Number three, I considered leaving off just because it is a match that most people had seen, but I loved it enough that I included it anyway, and it's from Noah. Um, Kazuchika Okada versus Kaito Kiyomiya from Noah Keiji Muto Grand Final Pro Wrestling in quotes, last, love holdout. Um, number four, Daniel Makabe versus Nicole Matthews from Dusk Pro Blue Moon. Number five, Violence is Forever versus The Work Horseman from DPW Forever Steel Cage Showdown. Number six, Mio Momono versus Mayumi Ozaki from Marvelous in Corican Hall on August 7th. Number seven, Astronauts versus Crazy Lovers from Big Japan Wrestling, their Corican Hall show at the end of the year, December 30. Number eight, Astronauts vs. Hideki Suzuki and Hikaru Sato from BJW New Standard Big B, The Day When Thank You Explodes 13130. That's from October 22. Number 9, Kazusada Higuchi vs. Yuki Ueno from the King of DDT Final. And number 10, Votan vs. Demus from Zona 23 Nostalgia Extrema, March 26. Uh, this is what I submitted. Uh, obviously, a bunch of these ended up in Sadness Village, honorable mentions. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put it out there. This is what I submitted to the VOW um, ballot. All right, so let's get right into the list. First off, a little statistics here in the intro. Uh, here we have a bunch of the honorable mentions. I think there are about 300 plus matches that were voted upon by all the voters. Uh, let's just get a few of the statistics at the top of the page here. In 2023, uh, another all-time record for a number of voters, 221 across 24 countries. Here I am right there in the Philippines. There may have been more voters from the Philippines. I don't know. Um, average age, 33 and a half years old. Uh, there were 380 matches across 79 promotions worldwide. Um yeah, that 79 promotions is a cool number. Uh, in an ideal world, that number only continues to increase as we uh, widen the voter base every single year. And this year, uh, I believe there was a statistic here about percentage of new voters. Um, hmm. Ah, yes, here. Roughly 24% of voters this year were first-time voters in the ballot, which is pretty cool. Uh, I like that. That's 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 great. Here are the list of all the um, voters. Uh, some of them I know. Some of them I who, is their work I'm not all that familiar with, but a lot of familiar names for people who spend a lot of time on Twitter <laughs> reading too much about pro wrestling. Uh, yeah, let's look at Sadness Village here. Uh, let's go to the full list at the bottom of the page, actually. I think this is the full list. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Can I just say, number 336, one called Manders versus Mad Dog Connolly from July 28th. Whoever voted for that, thank you for doing so. That rules! I'm so happy that match got on to Sadness Village. Even if it's at the bottom of the pile, I am so grateful that a small independent uh, matchup like this gets to have a, a place on this list. All right. Um, yeah. Lovely. Thank you for whoever that single voter was. Uh, a lot of my matches did end up here in Sadness Village. Let's just do a quick search over here. Nicole Matthews versus Daniel Makabe ended up at 174. Uh, and I was the sole vote. It got 
to 174 uh, just because I put it fourth, and I'm really proud of that. I think that's a really, really great match. I highly recommend everyone seek it out on Dusk Pro's YouTube channel. It's up there for free. Um, yeah, check it out. It rules. Uh, another interesting one here. Let's look at the astronauts. Um, yeah, their December 30 tag against the Crazy Lovers ended up here. I'm surprised that uh, Astronauts vs. Strong BJ only ended up at... Uh, only one vote was surprising to me. I know a lot of people who really liked that match, number 240. Um, I wonder if that's Simon, actually. Simon of Handwork Reviews. It might have been. Don't quote me on that. It might not have been. Uh, but I know that he was particularly high on that match. Uh, there are uh, my pick here, Hideki Suzuki and Hikaru Sato. Uh, three votes this time, which is pretty cool. Um, highest vote at eight, and I believe that is me. Yes, that's right. I had it at number eight. So that's pretty cool. At number 170. Um, what are the other matches I had on here? Oh, let's check out Violence is Forever. Uh, and the work horsemen, sadly, 171, only two votes. That I know for sure is only me and Simon. Um, great match. Hope everyone who sees this uh, checks it out. Uh, DPW has been really making waves. I think that I think that they're only getting better, and 2024 is off to a really strong start for them as well. But they had some really great stuff, especially in their tag team division in 2023. Check out the cage match with Violence is Forever. Um, let's see where Vot Votan and Demus... Ooh! Okay, maybe they're on the list proper. I've only seen a few placements on the list, so I'm really interested. Uh, hopefully that, uh, shows up there. Uh, just quick scan of a bunch of these. Uh, we have stuff from WXW. Uh, man, Purpose Wrestling. See, I've never even heard of that. Sapphire Reed versus Maya Matthews. Um, yeah, th it's it's always in Sadness Village where you get, like, the really weird picks. And I mean that as a compliment. I really do. This is the stuff where you might find your next best favorite match. Dick Togo versus Yasuo Arano uh, on one ballot. I think this may have been Korwu of Spinning Wheel Kicks vote right here. Um... Premier Promotions. Oh, Premier Promotions, the Jordan Breaks versus Zack Sabre Jr. match. Really fun match. It's basically Christmas in one match. It's a British rounds match. Uh, there's like one hard cam angle. Zack Sabre Jr. and Jordan Breaks are riffing, doing European style grappling for like 30 minutes. It's wonderful. Check it out. I'm glad it's in sadness. I wish it was higher, but I'm glad it's here for people to potentially find. Oh my god, Necro Butcher! <laughs> We got some Necro! <laughs> That's awesome. I'm not even trying to make fun of it. Genuinely, I just I just laugh when I see the name Maga Butcher. Look, I have enjoyed Necro Butcher matches in the past. I'm not some moral saint here. I'm not trying to cancel anyone for voting Necro Butcher, okay? Uh, it's just funny to me to see the name listed out like that. Again, someone named Dilf, Vo Dilf Boy. Dilf Boy Daltono! <laughs> Wrestling's so weird, man. Again, no shade to ever voted it. The name is just funny. Uh, yeah, lots of cool, lots of really interesting names here that I've never heard of. And again, that is a positive. That is a good thing. Uh, I, I I can't, I know I listened to the formerly known as Always Barry Tanner's uh, year-end melee and there was something from this particular French promotion that was mentioned. It may have been this one. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, it's cool to see the variety that shows up in the honorable mentions. We see a lot of CMLL, and I totally understand why it ends up in Sadness Village, even though it was my match of the year. And that is because CMLL, their main, um, their main selling point for this year what made them so great was consistency. They were not always peaking the highest, but they achieved a certain average level of great that made them so watchable basically the whole year. Um, yeah, Jack Saber Jr. versus Jude London, PWA. I'm glad people are voting for stuff from P PWA, by the way. Uh, um, Madison Eagles talked to me a little bit about PWA when I interviewed her for the Nicole video. 
um, and it's cool that they're making a little name for themselves down in Australia. More and people are more and more people are hopefully paying attention. I know that the velocities got a lot of hype in 2021 when I first did this reaction video. That's cool. It is great to see uh, wrestling from all over the world represented. And again, more often than not, you're gonna find it in Sadness Village because this is where we find the matches that have like scattered support. You know, matches that don't have uh, legions of people defending them, but they have very passionate people defending them. And I think that's one of the best parts of it. All right. Let's move on to the list prior, man. This time I'm going to read out everything. <laughs> I'm going to read out the whole list. And that's probably just my excuse, so I don't have to edit anything out this time. Uh, and if I do end up editing this, you won't even hear this part. <laughs> Let's get into it, man. Um, Voices of Wrestling, Top 100 Matches of the Year 2023. Number 100, Shuri versus Chihiro Hashimoto. Great match. Loved it. I think it probably could fall in my Top 100. I'm not sure where I had it at the end of the year. Pretty happy with that placement. I thought it was great. Chihiro in Stardom was like my favorite thing in Stardom all year, and I'm not the biggest Stardom fan in general. So I thought that is a. I thought that it stood out that Chihiro got me to tune in to their promotion quite regularly at the start of the year. Uh, number 99, El Desperado versus Francesco Akira. I like Despi, but I don't really love his like traditional junior heavyweight stuff in New Japan all that much. Number 98, Kazusada Higuchi versus Harashima from the uh, Dio Grand Prix at the end of the year. The people I know who love this match really, really love this match. It's just sort of like outside my top 20. I think it ended up like top 30, definitely top 50. Really great match. Um, I think if you're a big fan of these two, especially, you'll think it's one of the best of the year and definitely think it would be higher. Um... I'm personally not pressed about it being at number 98. I did love it, but I didn't love it as much as some others. And I'm just glad it's on the list, to be frank. Number 97, John Moxley versus El Desperado. This was actually in my top 20, if you have seen my 2023 year-end video. But again, not really pressed about it uh, not being in the higher reaches. This is not the particular style of match that I know is favored by Voices of Wrestling and their uh, typical voters. And even when it came out, people, a lot of people enjoyed it, but I think I was one of the people who like really, really enjoyed it and was really pushing for it to be in the upper levels of a match of the year list. So the reception I saw totally matches the placement of it on this list as far as I'm concerned. Gunther versus Chad Gable from September 4. Awesome series. Um, I'm not sure which of the Chad Gable matches actually ended up on my list. I I'm fuzzy on the dates. I know there were three. My favorite was the third and last one. If this is it, then I wish it was higher. Um, but that's okay. It's a WWE match, and I'm not gonna sit here and shout and scream about a WWE match needing to be higher on a list, alright? Like, there's only so much feeling you can put into defending the WWE, even when it is great. Personally, I thought the third Gunther Chad Gable match is top 20 material, um, but we have it here at number 96. Number 95, Christian Cage versus Darby Allen. This is the Wrestle Dream match. Uh, I wasn't. I thought it was great. I thought the interference did sort of take away from it uh, in the final fall. The first two falls were the strongest for me, so it wouldn't make my top 100. But I totally understand why people really like it. It's pretty great. Number 94, Bishamon versus Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kazuchika Okada. This was a good match. I remember watching it. Uh, I would not have it in a personal top 100. Number 93, Tomoya Hirata. Tomoya Hirata versus Violento Jack. Um, I remember watching uh, quite a bit of Hirata uh, in like the middle of the year when a few friends were recommending his stuff. So I think that he's cool. Uh, I... There's a certain ceiling I had to like my enjoyment of his matches, but it's pretty cool that he made it on this list. Number 92, Eddie Kingston versus Brian Danielson, my number two match of the year. Um, I found that even within my sort of circle of the internet, my friends, um, I this was weirdly divisive in a way I wasn't expecting. Some people really didn't care for it, which is pretty surprising given the names involved. 
uh, I loved it. I I spoke about it quite lovingly in the uh, year-end video. But finding that it was divisive, I guess I understand why it ended up so relatively low on the list. Um, yeah, this is my this is my this is as close as I get to experiencing Final Battle 06 in real time. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I think I prefer this match too. Um, but I totally get people who prefer the Homicide match. Uh, number 91, Mio Yamashita versus Mizuki. Number 90, Rocky Romero versus Volador Jr. Uh, Volador Jr. is not my favorite in single settings. Uh, so that's probably why I didn't particularly care for that series in CMLL. Uh, and there were a lot better Rocky Romero matches this year too. Number 89, Soberanio Jr. versus Stuka Jr. I wish this was higher, dude. Chris O'Brien, my boy Chris O'Brien, saying here that Soberanio dodging an entrance attack and finishing his entrance is the babyface moment of the year. That is correct. No one has looked cooler and more like a superhuman hero than Soberanio Jr. did on that night. I really wish this was higher. Um, yeah, that one deserves to be much higher. It was my favorite of the CMLL singles matches this year. Even better than uh, a lot of the Mystico stuff, which is still great, but that one especially. Check that one out. Number 88, Shiori versus Suzu Suzuki. Number 87, Madoka Kikuta versus Big Boss Shimizu. The best uh, open the Dream Gate title match of the year, and probably the best since the KZ Shun Skywalker one from a couple years back. Number 86, The House of Black versus The Elite. I don't care for House of Black matches, and I don't care for Elite Trios matches too, so mm. <laughs> Again, that's just me. Number 85, Josh Alexander versus Steve Macklin. Number 84, the 37, Kamina versus Chris Brooks and Yoshihiko. I'm not actually sure which combo of the 37, Kamina is here. I was not able to follow DDT as closely as I had in years prior. A lot of that is because of Higuchi no longer having the belt. Um, yeah, that's just me. Number 83, Higuchi, Mio Yamashita, and Naomichi Marufuji versus Eruption. This was part of Saki Akai's uh, retirement tour. Number 82, Mina Shirakawa versus Saya Kamitani. Again, not the biggest stardom fan, so I don't really have anything I can chip in with that. Number 81, Will Ospreay versus Taichi. Number 80, Mercedes Mer Monet versus Kairi. I remember really liking the Mercedes Monet matches this year. Uh, not all of my. Uh, people in my circle were quite as high on it. I thought they were great, and I'm really excited to see her back and wrestling again. Uh, so there you go. Number 79, Ilya Dragunov versus Carmelo Hayes. Number 78, Shingo Takagi versus Aaron Hanare. Uh, number 77, Chaos and Hiroshi Tanahashi versus the United Empire. I wonder if this is a trios. Yeah, it's the dream team, Tanahashi, Okada, and Ishii. Number 76, Mystico versus Templario, which was probably my favorite of the Mystico singles matches this year. Templario is a great Rudo because he has the best offense uh, of all the Rudos, um, so he doesn't always have to rely on the kind of cheating and shtick that the other Rudos bring. He's a little bit more of a direct uh, bruiser or, um, yeah, he just has a more varied offensive arsenal. Moving on. Number 75, Julia versus Maya Yukihi. Number 74, the Dream Team versus the Blackpool Combat Club. I thought it was a great match. Probably one of my better, one of my favorite Shota Umino matches this year, if only because, you know, putting him in a six man gets to hide a few of those weaknesses that I don't really care for. Number 73, the Best Friends and Eddie Kingston, along with Orange Cassidy and Penta El Cero Miedo versus the Blackpool Combat Club from, I believe this is the all in match, the Stadium Stampede. Pretty great match. Um, yeah, I loved Eddie and Claudio brawling all over Wembley Stadium. That fucking rules, man. Uh, it probably just misses my top 100, but it was on the biggest show of the year. I'm not shocked it left an impression on a lot of people. Number 72, Shinsuke Nakamura versus The Great Muda. Number 71, Tetsuya Naito versus Keiji Muto. Pretty cool that the big farewell matches are kind of back-to-back -back like that. I didn't watch either of them. I'm not a big Muto fan. I'm so sorry. No, I'm not. Number 70, Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. Number 69, Dragon Kid and Shun Skywalker. And Strong Machine J and Ultimo Dragon versus Diamante. I believe this is the Cage Apuesta. I did not see that. Um, yes, number 68, The Elite, Eddie Kingston and Tomohiro Ishii versus the Blackpool Combat Club. 
I'm pretty sure this is the Forbidden Door tag, which was also quite great. Uh, yeah. Eddie and Claudio doing their thing, teasing the interactions between Eddie and Mox. Great stuff. They do lose the thread in like the last quarter of the year, but they pick it right back up for the Continental Classic. Uh, I would be complaining about that more, but we got the Continental Classic and it was a nice little bow on that story. Number 67, Will Ospreay versus Josh Alexander. Number 66, Rocky Romero versus Volador Jr. Number 65, Madoka Kikuta versus Shun Skywalker. I was glad Kikuta won the belt here, but Shun's kind of like uh, Dragon Gate heel act sort of brought it down for me. Uh, I don't always love what they bring to that kind of uh, ep epic length. Not necessarily epic, but like a main event style title match in Japan. It doesn't personally work for me. Athena versus Willow Nightingale from Death Before Dishonor. Great match. Probably the second best of the Athena Willow Nightingale matches for me. I hope we see my favorite a little higher on the list. Uh, hell yeah, dude. Roll Tide, baby. Number 63, Adam Priest versus Anthony Henry uh, from Lords of Chaos. This was the no ropes match. Hell yeah, dude. I'm so glad it's on here. And I'm so glad it's higher than a bunch of like uh, much more accessible and popular stuff. Um, it's in my top 20. If the list was up to me, it would be so much higher than this. But the fact that it's here beating, beating out a lot of other stuff that's on this list. Sick. I'm so happy. Adam Priest, one of the best wrestlers in the world. If we're just talking ability, Anthony Henry consistently underrated in terms of his utilization with the company who's paying him the most money right now. Guys. Hell yeah! <laughs> this is a win for me. I know, I know that some of you are watching this video to see me like dunk on some of these picks and or like be mad that some of them are lower, but I'm honestly genuinely just happy this is on here and as high as it is. Uh, and look, you can see the people who love it really love it because the highest vote is second place and it is a wonderful match. It's the best US indie match of the year. Number 62, Fujita Hayato and Masaki Mochizuki versus Fuminori Abe and Ik Ikuto Hidaka. Um, I remember watching this match and I do remember enjoying it. Uh, I think it's... It would probably make my top 100, maybe somewhere around this range too. I'm not quite as connected to it as some other people I have seen, uh, but it was really enjoyable. Especially if you like the heavy striking that all these guys are known for. Number 61, the Elite versus the Death Triangle. I genuinely and truly don't recall watching any of the Best of Seven series, and I will simply keep it that way. Number 60, Kones Konosuke Takeshita versus Kenny Omega from All In. Was it All Out? All Out from All Out. Um, All Out was a great show, and I didn't think this match was necessarily bad, but it definitely didn't live up to like my favorite stuff from either man, uh, it was just sort of like the kind of standard bomb fest you might expect from these two, but without sort of the better emotional beats and thoughtfulness that's in their best work. Um, and maybe others enjoyed the context of it a bit more. That's just me. Uh, I don't care for... I haven't cared for much of Kenny Omega's AEW work in general. But I will have nice things to say about him later. I promise. I know what's coming. And there will be nice things said about Kenny Omega. Number 59, MJF versus Kenny Omega. I did not watch this. This was deep into no longer wanting to see MJF wrestle. Um, so there's that. Number 58, Kaito Kiyomiya versus Keno from the New Year show, which I thought was great, actually. I know I've been on here dunking on Noah in the past. This match fucking ruled. There was a great apron bump, and they were just they just had such great energy to them in this particular match. Really great match. Number 57, the Wembley Stadium main event. Um, hmm. Mentally trying to figure out how much energy. <laughs> How much energy I want to devote to this. I'm deciding 
to not give it too much. I understand why people like it, especially if they were heavily invested in the uh, Better Than You Bebe storyline. Uh, I was not. And this... This being the main event of what might be the biggest pro wrestling show in terms of live gate ever. Hmm. Yeah. Let's just say it wouldn't be my pick for that particular spot. And <laughs> 57 is Yeah, 57 is kind, but it has its fans and I understand why. Um I understand why this struck an emotional chord with the people who enjoyed it. There we go. Number 56. Naoya, Na, Naoya, oh Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry. Number 56, Naoya, Nomura, and Yuma Ayoyagi versus Mia Kento Takuya. I remember seeing this at the start of the year, and it was not my personal favorite, especially because I just prefer Takuya Nomura uh, in other stuff. You know, like, I just like him better in The Astronauts. I am not the biggest Kento Miyahara fan, so there's that. Uh, but this wasn't a bad match, if I recall. I recall enjoying it enough. Uh, but I do know that it had a lot of defenders and people hyping it up. And All Japan in 2023 especially had a lot of people really coming back to it and really enjoying it. So I am not shocked by its placement. Number 55, Samoa Joe versus Darby Allen from the mystical February 1st Dynamite. Uh, yeah, this was awesome. It was in my top 20. It's Darby Death, dude. He fucking dies in the coolest fucking ways. And it rocks. <laughs> Samoa Joe is the man. Uh, no better person to just demolish that twerp. Hell yeah. Number 54, FTR and Mark Briscoe versus Blackpool Combat Club. This one is sort of surprising to me in terms of its placement. Uh, I did like it eventually as a whole, but it just was sort of weird in concept and construction that I'm sort of shocked it had enough steam to get on this list, and especially so close to the midpoint. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't a bad match at all. Just really surprised it got this high. Number 53, Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest. This is a match that I didn't like as much as the uh, fight to honor Jay Briscoe, but it's a match whose placement I understand way more because I definitely saw a lot of people saying this was a match of the year contender, maybe their favorite match of the year. The Puerto Rico crowd was so hot. Uh, even if I didn't love the match itself, the entrance with Bad Bunny fucking ruled. He looked like a superstar. So this, I understand even if I don't agree. And something like um, the fight to honor Jay Briscoe, I more agree with, but I understand less. If that sort of helps you kind of like get how I'm sort of reacting to this list. <clears throat> Number 52, Brian Danielson versus Kazuchika Okada. Again, one that I don't agree with, but one that I understand. It was the main event of Forbidden Door, which is such a popular pay-per-view annually for AEW. It's a dream match between two names people have been wanting to see forever. Um, I wish it had been less of an Okada match and more of a Danielson match, but we'll never really know what it would have looked like if Danielson wasn't injured. I It sort of rocks that he is injured because I can say he tapped out Okada with one arm. Fuck yeah, Dragon. The GOAT. I wish he didn't give the win back. That's another story. There's time to fix that because maybe Okada's coming to AEW to lose the third. But that's just me. I'm just talking shit at that point, all right? I did enjoy it. I think I could see where they could have improved, and it's especially much clearer now that we've seen the Tokyo Dome match. So yeah, uh, I get number 52. I, 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 I understand it. Like, that's not one that surprises me. Number 51, hell yes, my guys. Mayubi Ozaki versus Mio Momono. I know so many people were so mad about Mio losing the belt, and they were right to be mad. All right, I get that we shouldn't really place our faith in Marvelous or Oz Academy strictly to get Mio Momono to the place where she deserves to be, but this match fucking rocks, dude. Ozaki beats the shit out of her. Um, dog walking her through the crowd 
Whew, that's, that is heel heat, man. And that's the kind of, like, hatred I don't really get from too much, uh... Japanese pro wrestling. Even the Japanese pro wrestling I enjoy currently, like, say, Astronauts um, or uh, the Heavyweights from Big Japan, right? I generally really like that style. I will rate it quite high. But it doesn't feel like hatred <laughs> in the way that Mayumi Ozaki just bullying the shit out of Miyomomono felt like hatred. Um... Hell yeah, it was in my top 20. Again, if given the choice, I'd have it higher. But right here, at almost exactly the midpoint, sick. Fucking sick. Moving on, upper half of the list, number 50, Claudio Castagnoli versus Eddie Kingston from Supercard of Honor. Uh, man, I wish it was higher. I really do. But I've heard enough of the criticisms from people to know why it doesn't rank quite as highly as other matches. Uh, people felt weird about the crowd. The crowd were weird. Um, I don't know. I, it, it's so hard for me to detach from this particular match just because I was so hyper-focused on it and the rivalry leading into it that I just sort of... I could see all the things they were doing and how well executed those things were. Uh, yeah, I love this match. Number three match of the year. I stand by that. I wish it was higher. Number 49, Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn. Probably the most emotionally engrossing of the WWE matches of 2023. Uh, even though I still didn't love it. Uh, I get why people do, though. Just because Sami is such a beloved figure and he did turn in such a great babyface uh, performance... This was like one of the better Roman Reigns heel performances on top. So I get it. Uh, I would not have it this high. I think I even had some friends who were a lot higher on it than I was too. So there you go. Yeah, dude. Number 48. Crazy Lovers versus Astronauts. I'm shocked this made it on at all. I do prefer the December match. Uh, but I get why the February match is so popular. Because they brought out deathmatch stuff at the end. It just feels so... It just feels so different to everything else you're going to see in wrestling. That sort of, like, heated, stiff striking in the first half of the match leading into, like, that dick measuring of bringing out the light tubes. It's sick as hell, and I'm not mad at it being at just number 48. Uh, it's just, like, it's, like, just outside the range of where I would have had it. Maybe I would have had it, like, maybe, what, top 30, top 25 if we're splitting hairs, but this isn't an awful placement for it. Y'all are maybe wanting me to say <laughs> that Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes doesn't belong on this list. And if and if I was making a top 100, I wouldn't have Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes because number one, I didn't watch it. And number two, I don't really care for Cody Rhodes' work in the WWE that I've seen. Uh, but I'm not mad at this placement because <laughs> it's so funny. It is so funny. It's so funny to watch Cody Rhodes fail, dude. Him, <laughs> him sitting there with the rubber chicken in the ring. Uh, just, uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're like, for people who are watching this in the future, this is being recorded at like the peak of Cody Mania. People are like trying to say they'll start a new yes movement. I'm not even going to get into that. So all I'll say is that image of Cody Rhodes being sat in the ring while Roman Reigns walks up the ramp with all the belts. Art. <laughs> <laughs> Number 46, Kaito Kiyomiya and Yoshiki Inamura versus Kazuchika Okada and Togi Makabe. I'm actually sur yeah, I'm surprised that uh, this wasn't voted higher with this particular voter base just because I did hear so much hype for it. I agree, I agree it's great. Uh, I th I do think it's great, especially as a setup to the Okada Kiyomiya singles match. Um, I do think that it's sort of reputation as like a borderline shoot is somewhat exaggerated. It was not the hardest kick in the world by Kiyomiya. And even when he's trying, Okada isn't... Um, He's not famous for throwing heaters, okay? Uh, so yeah. Great, 
match, yes. Great setup for um, the Tokyo Dome match, absolutely. Um, but not one of the craziest worked shoot style things we've ever seen. Number 45, Eddie Kingston versus John Moxley, the finals of the Continental Classic. Great match. Uh, not my favorite of Eddie's Continental Classic matches, but definitely my favorite of Mox's. Um, yeah, I loved them taking it to the mat, which is not something you maybe would have expected from these particular two names. Uh, I loved Eddie playing the ace, holding his ground. Great match. Uh, 45 feels about right. Uh, I'm trying to remember where I placed it. It would have been maybe like top 30 or 40 or something. So this is not... This is not crazy placement even compared to how I would have arranged it. Number 44, the Wrestle Dream Swerve Strickland versus Adam Page. This probably would miss my top 100. Uh, I do think Swerve sort of brings it down a little bit. Hangman's performance is excellent in this though. Working the hand, being a little more heel-like because the hometown crowd was behind Swerve. Really great case maker for Hangman, even though I don't think it entirely comes together as a match as a whole. Uh, number 43, the Blackpool, Blackpool Combat Club versus the Elite. This is Anarchy in the Arena 2, I believe. Um, I've always been the low man on both Anarchy in the Arena matches. I thought this was still like borderline great. There was too much good shit in it for me to deny. I did like the pyrotechnic super kick. I loved... Uh, Claudio giant swinging people all around the arena. Mox is great when he's stabbing people with forks. Danielson's like punching people. Um, notice that everything I said was like gimmicked and then I got to just like dragon punching people. This was like in the time where he was sort of healing from lingering injuries and he still puts in a great performance just by throwing really sick punches. That's just the kind of wrestler he is. Um, yeah. I would have liked it more if Kenny Omega didn't do the, the the shield thing. I don't even remember what he was using as a shield, but it was like a bit where he had like a piece of metal around his arm and he was using it as a shield. And I thought it was very silly and not for me. Number 42, Magical Sugar Rabbits and Mio Yamashita and Rika Tatsumi and Shoko Nakajima versus Daisy Monkey, Mio Watanabe, Moka Miyamoto, and Yuki Arai. Number 41, Will Ospreay versus Yoda Suji. Uh, I have enjoyed some of Will Ospreay's New Japan matches this year more than I was expecting, even enough to call it great, and I'm pretty sure we'll be talking about some of those matches later on. This was not really one of them. I like Yoda Suji. I think he's currently the most complete package of the new Musketeers, but I do think that there's still work to be done in terms of like really polishing his ring work to be a main event act. That's my thoughts on that. Number 40. Number 40, Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Yuma Ayoyagi. Number 39, Kazuchika Okada versus Shingo Takagi. Did I even watch this? Oh man. I remember being somewhat disappointed by the Shingo Okada match in 2021. So I don't, I think I did watch this and enjoyed it enough. It did not leave a particularly strong impression on me. Um, but yeah, the Okada matches do well on the Voices of Wrestling list. That's just a general rule. Um, not even a rule, just an observation. Number 38. Mascara Dorada 2.0 versus Rocky Romero, which I, at a time, I thought was the CMLL match of the year. It doesn't entirely hold up on a rewatch, but it's still pretty fucking great, especially as Rocky Romero sort of grounding and leading a young wrestler like Dorada to something as great as this. All the back work is really great. Uh, Dorada's really great when he's making his comebacks, hitting all the flashier moves. Excellent match. Um, would it make a top 100 for me? I think it probably does. Maybe somewhere lower. Uh, but yeah, I'm not mad that it's here. I know it did get a lot of hype as one of the better CMLL singles matches. Uh, I prefer Stuka Jr. versus Soberanya Jr. But this one was the one that really got a lot of loud support behind it. So again, not shocked that it's this high up. Number 37, Kazuchika Okada, Keno, Yumayo Yoyagi versus Hiroshi Tanahashi, Kaito Kiyomiya, and Kento 
Miyahara. I believe this is the All Together main event, which I remember having fun with. Uh, I wasn't in love with it, but it was a good match. Number 36, Tomohiro Ishii versus Luke Jacobs. I pretty much didn't watch anything from the British Independence this year outside of like the Zack matches against Jordan Briggs. Number 35, Titan versus Mascara Dorada. I'm trying to remember which Dorada this is. I think this is just Grand Metalik. Um, yes. Uh, Titan is one of my least favorite of the CMLL contingent. I like him best in six-man tags because I think that's where he's... where I'm least exposed to the flaws of his that I don't care for. I think he has, like, some of the softer offense and he's not quite as smooth as his contemporaries, but he's still quite good if you slot him into, like, the standard CMLL trios format. Uh, that being said, his singles matches don't always hit this sort of level for me. Number 34, Will Ospreay versus Zack Sabre Jr. Number 33, Kenichiro Arai versus Gentaro. Um, the year's designated nerds match, and I say that with a lot of love uh, as someone who makes a lot of nerd votes himself. Um, the people who love this match truly are like deeply in love with it. Uh, and you do have to go way out of your way to see it. You have to DM the seller on Twitter. Uh, there's like a download link and everything. Um, so there is a certain barrier of entry to seeing this match, which makes its high placement all the more impressive, uh, given that there is that sort of difficulty in accessing, in accessing it at all, let alone loving it enough to put it in a top 10. So it's pretty cool that it made it up here. Um, I don't know, man. Maybe I was just too stupid and too bored for it. Uh, it was a little slow and dry for my tastes. But people who like really grounded, sensible mat work uh, that progresses for up to an hour. Yeah, man. This is the one for you. Uh, check it out. I do recommend you check it out because it's cool to check out stuff that... Uh, isn't the most popular but receives a lot of hype from a very passionate fan base. Uh, that's why I checked it out and I think it's perhaps worth your time as well because again the people who love this match really really love it as in look nine total votes and two of them had it match of the year yeah it's like you'll either think it's the best shit in the world or it won't be for you and either is fine. Yes, number 32, Deimos versus Votan from Zona 23. The punches, so good. The, the fouls, at one point, they're just like on the ground, in the dirt. Just sort of kneeing each other in the balls, and it rules. <laughs> A wonderful lucha brawl. Just the blood and the punching, the shouting crowd around them in the junkyard. It's awesome. Um, I would have it the tiniest bit higher, like just outside the top 20. But here in the 30s, that's a great place for it, honestly. Um, so thrilled about it being here. Such a great match. Uh, check out Votan and Deimos, man. Uh, especially Deimos, because I am pumped for the Mad Dog Connolly and Deimos dog collar match that's going to happen at Action Wrestling's Dean this coming April. Uh, so I highly recommend checking out as much as you can from both those wrestlers. And Votan as well. Number 31. A man's dreams dying in front of your very eyes. <laughs> Kazuchika Okada versus Kaito Kiyomiya. Personally surprised this isn't higher. This is the kind of match that I think would really appeal to the general uh, Voices of Wrestling voter base. Um, I'm surprised it isn't higher. I wish it was higher, but... I guess there are more like traditional sort of like Bushi Road main event style stuff that would take precedent over this if that's your particular uh, favorite style of match. Uh, this one's real special though. This one only got better with time as like the effects of it became clearer and clearer that man, Okada really just ended this man's life. <laughs> I love Kaito Kiyomiya. Genuinely, I think he's extremely talented. He is one of the, my favorite wrestlers in Japan today. But, ooh, 
Ooh, is it good watching Okada just put that boy in his place? <laughs> and again, this is from someone who's not the biggest Okada fan. Going into this, I was rooting for Kaito, man. I wanted to see him take it to Okada, but the viciousness with which Okada ended him. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> What a match. Uh, I would have it higher. I get why it's here. Here we go. Number 30, Danielson versus Roosh. Oh, I definitely wish this was higher, uh, but I get it. Uh, there's a lot more that's way more in line with uh, the VOW voter base. But yeah, great match. The blood, the bumping, so good. Um, I, I, I would actually say that it sort of like took a little bit of a bump uh, in my rankings at the end of the year. Uh, it really hit extremely well the second time uh so i wasn't extremely high on it to start with and it got better for me maybe that's why it's at number 30 i think it's great everyone should check it out most people probably have if they're watching this it, it was on dynamite that's not some hidden gem for you guys number 29 volador jr versus angel de oro from the anniversario number 28 Chris Brooks versus Kazusada Higuchi in the King of DDT final. Um, I'm not the biggest Chris Brooks fan. I think he is good. And I think that this was the best possible way to do him defeating Higuchi. Um, I thought they were smart to have Higuchi enter the match with a bad arm from the Oeno semifinal. I thought that Brooks was focused enough on the arm to make it believable when he got the submission at the end. I thought that Higuchi looked um, suitably imposing as a threat and a monster for Brooks to overcome. Great match. Uh, one top 100, maybe towards the bottom of the list or maybe just missing it uh, in my personal rankings. Number 27, CM Punk versus Samoa Joe from Wembley Stadium. Beautiful match. Uh, yeah, dude. Funk Funk emulation, and it's not. I I will be talking about this more in something soon. It's not just that he's doing Funk's moves; it's the spirit of the thing, you know. It's the spirit of the thing that someone like CM Punk has been all over the world. He's done it in the smallest venues, and now doing it in front of the biggest crowd imaginable. And it, this was just days after Funk's passing. Yeah. It just fits. Samoa Joe had a great year finally being the guy to like do the Uno reverse on Punk's Hogan shtick. Sick. Sick as all hell. And Punk finally, finally after decades, he finally hit the plunge on Joe even though he took a bit of a dirty route to get there by biting him. That's, that's how you put a cap on something like this. And yeah. Uh, CM Punk says goodbye to professional wrestling in this match in one of the most exhilarating ways possible. Number 26, Will Ospreay versus Mike Bailey, which I did think was great. Yeah, that might surprise some people. I thought it was great. One of my favorite Will Ospreay performances of the year. If not my favorite match of his, one of my favorite individual performances from him. Uh, yeah, just a bomb fest, hitting all their signature stuff in a compressed setting, no space to really let anything meander or become too indulgent. Yeah, great match. Top 100 for me, probably in the lower end or not missing it, but it did get hype. I did see the hype, so I'm not shocked it's here. Here we go, upper reaches of the list now. Number 25, Master Watto versus Titan. I remember when these lists were first dropping, uh, I opened this article just to like get a quick scan of where everything was, and I saw this match at number 25, and I was baffled. This is, this is the match that surprised me. Like, this is the one where I'm like, what? Because <laughs> I didn't even remember that it had happened or existed. Uh, and it got 19 votes 
one person had it as their match of the year and I heard nothing about this and this is this is the part where I get to speak on like how my personal bubble circle of Twitter is so different from the voter base in general because I heard nothing about this match and now it's here at number 25 which feels so weird um but hey it has its fans and I'm not gonna go back to watch this just to say I hated it uh it's just there it's just there at number 25 and I will never I will never know <laughs> I just will never know. I'm not going back for that one. So, congrats! <laughs> like, they can just have it. That's it. I have nothing else to say. I'm just really shocked. Number 24, Saya Kamitani versus Hazuki. Number 23, Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. Which I think did get a little too much hype. Um, I probably got the most dampened effect from it because I did see it after it had aired and when the hype train had already begun for it especially around those big bumps that both Charlotte and Rhea had taken I think it was mostly Charlotte taking sick bumps uh, and I didn't think the match as a whole sort of lived up to those peaks but I did think it was very good I wouldn't say this match was bad at all I thought it was quite good um, not my favorite match from that particular show but my favorite match from that show hasn't come up yet so I think most people agree um, but even something like Rey Mysterio versus Dom, uh, I would easily rank over Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. It would not make my top 100. And something like Rey versus Dom would make like my top 50 or something. So there you go. Number 22, Tam Nakano versus Julia. Number 21, Kenny Omega versus El Ijo Del Vikingo. Very fun TV match. Uh, but I was also on the lower end of this one. I had friends who... Really liked it too, but it was... I don't know, man. It's a Vikingo match. <laughs> uh, it's always great in the moment, uh, but it's sort of hard to surprise me when that's just his whole thing. That's just me. Uh, it was a good match. It was not bad. It was a good match. And I did see the hype. I get why it's up here. Number 20, Kemi Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus The Usos in the WrestleMania main event. This one really did not connect with me at all. Um, yeah, I I don't love WWE tags, um, but this one especially. I guess I could enjoy. I guess I have enjoyed quite a few WWE tag team matches when it's like in the mid card, you know, somewhere where they can do something real breezy and flashy. But this, with like the attempts at the epic and you know pretending this was Sammy's big moment when it should have been beating Roman. It, and the ring work itself never quite hit the um, never quite hit the peaks I would have wanted from it. And it's just hard to watch a match like this for me personally. You know, like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Usos when they're just sort of plugging the Usos into like an abridged version of their matches with the Young Bucks. The Usos are not the Young Bucks. Sorry, they're not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, it's the Mania main event. People like the result. I get why it's... I get why people would have voted for it. I'm sort of surprised it got to the top 20. Um, but it is it is what it is, you know. Very famous match. Um, big emotional payoff. I get it. I would not have it in my top 100 personally. In my list. My own list. In my head. Uh, that is barely ordered and is mostly incoherent. Number 19, John Moxley versus Orange Cassidy from the AEW All Out pay per view. Just missed my top 20, uh, so I'm not mad at this placement at all. It's great. It uh, got better on a second viewing. Moxley's performance in it is sort of underrated as one of his better ones of the year, if you ask me. Uh, I, all the attention is rightfully on Orange Cassidy for. The blade job and the defiant babyface selling and all that. And he was great at it. Uh, it's just that going back to it, I was surprised how much I had sort of not gotten out of Moxley's performance initially. That really is there. He's brutal in it. And the way he cuts off Cassidy is great. He's a perfect sort of foil to Cassidy's championship act. Number 18... 
Sari versus Arisa Nakajima, which I'm very happy made it up this far in the list, actually. Uh, it did suffer just a little bit for me personally in the rewatch. At a point, this was in, at the point that it happened, this was like in my top five, top 10. Going back to it, there were some flaws with it that sort of kept it up, of, kept it out of the higher reaches of the list. Um, especially the limb work they were sort of doing at the start, which is brutal in the moment, but doesn't really kind of pay off towards the end. But it's a great match, and I'm glad that something like this ended up so high on the list. Um, stardom is the Joshi flavor of choice, typically speaking, for the VOW Top 100. So having something like this from Seedling um, with two of my favorite Joshi wrestlers is wonderful, and I'm glad it made it into the Top 20. Number 17, Yuya Aoki versus Yuji Okabayashi. Another really great match that I totally get the hype for. Um, and another one where I'm surprised it got this high. Uh, I know that there were people who were replying to me saying it was their match of the year. And here we have two first place votes. And it's a great, great match where Yuji basically lets himself get deconstructed by Yuya Aoki. Where Aoki just sort of endures everything that Yuji throws at him. And it's a great little passing of the torch in terms of uh, letting Yuji enter his hiatus and having Aoki be this strong champion moving into the rest of the year. Uh, great match. Uh, top 25-ish? Top 30 for me? Top 40? Something like that. But not mad at it being here. I'm, I'm all for the variety. I am all for the variety and... Um, Promotions that don't always make up the majority of this list, making it into higher slots. That's super cool. I'm glad this is here. Number 16, the G1 Climax Final between Tetsuya Naito and Kazuchika Okada, which I did watch, and I did not like as much as another G1 match from this weekend, which is kind of surprising given the participants of the one I liked more, but I think we'll be talking about that a little later on so yeah we'll get to that later number 15 queen's quest versus Oedo tai um number 14 will osprey versus shota umino this one i i'm not surprised it's here but this is one of the ones i really disagree with i don't think umino has really shown he can hold together a sort of epic match like this and osprey's not the kind of guy i really look to in terms of guiding people through these kinds of matches. Um, I will say that Osprey is often the better worker in something like this, but he's not the kind of worker who, in my view, can really get the most out of a young wrestler. Typically, you want something a little more focused or a little more concise, but that's also just not a thing that typically happens in the Bushi Road main event style. So. Osprey is both a victim to the kind of general in-house style of New Japan as well as to his own uh, less savory impulses as far as I'm concerned. Number 13, Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Kento Miyohara. This was the Triple Crown title match, uh, their second match of the year. Number 12, FTR versus Bullet Club Gold. 7-15, I am not sure if this is the two out of three falls match uh, let's give it a quick look here, actually. FTR versus Bullet Club Gold. 7.15. 7.15. Collision, FTR, go. Uh, two out of three. It is the two out of three. Okay, I did not like the two out of three falls match. Uh, and I know a lot of people did, and I'm actually... No, yeah, this makes sense. Number 12, in terms of the amount of hype I saw for it, the number of people pulling for it. Number 12 makes sense. Um, and I did not care for this match. I thought their build-up tag was much better. Uh, the two out of three just kind of falls apart for me in the third fall. Like, I don't think they really earn the sort of breakdown in action when things start really going wild. Um, it was a bit of a shaky transition into that kind of tone for me. I thought the runtime was beyond excessive and indulgent. Um, yeah, there's a really great match buried under this, and we saw that like a week before. 
so yeah, that th those are my thoughts on FDR versus Bullet Club Gold. I would actually really like to see it again. Uh, the the pairing in something low stakes, like if you just gave them like ten minutes on a dynamite, as like just for something to boost one of their them in the rankings or something like that. I bet it's gonna be a lot better, honestly. Uh, but that's my own little that's my own little uh, conspiracy theory on that. Uh, but yeah, again. This one is not shocking. Uh, he, I saw the hype. I totally get it. I disagree, um, but I wasn't uh, blown away by seeing it here. Number 11, Gunther versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. Yeah, dude. They hit really hard. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. That's it. That's, that's, that's the selling point. Am I wrong? They hit really hard in a big stadium, and it rules. Uh... I, there was a point I probably had it top 11, and it just sort of fell in the rankings as other matches that had, like, stronger narratives, more build-up behind them, sort of took precedence. But Gunther is the best in the WWE right now, and he was able to have a really great match with two people who didn't mind having the shit beaten out of them, and it ruled. All right, now we're going to get into the top 10. Here we go. Not gonna open up each individual um, page for it unless we're like really curious about some stuff. But here we go. Number 10, Brian Danielson versus Ricky Starks. I would have it higher, but top 10 is definitely a suitable position for it. Uh, the best gimmick match of AEW in 2023, even though there's some strong competition for that title. Danielson looking like an absolute freak, even though he had just come back from breaking his arm. What a maniac. Oh, my God. Um, Ricky Starks' career match. I think that's... Um, I think even people who don't like Ricky Starks like this match and will admit that it's the best thing he's ever done by a fair distance. Uh, yeah. Number nine, Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Kento Miyahara. I think this is from the One Night Only special. Uh, that All Japan did with Noah. And I did watch this one. I did not watch the title match at the end of the year, or at least I didn't finish it. Um, I don't know, man. It do does not click for me. It really did not click for me. Uh, I don't get it. But they're also not two wrestlers I consider my favorites or that I really go out of my way for uh, in other circumstances either. So just kind of putting them together like this wasn't really bound to do much for me. Number eight, Fuminori Abe. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Fuminori Abe versus Takuya Nomura from We Are the Fighting Detectives. Yeah, man. This is a win. All right. It's my number one. It's match of the year. It's match of the decade. But getting it in the VOW top eight, that's a win. I can't even be mad at it, honestly. Like, I'm sh there's gonna be matches above this that I don't like, and I'll be like, so much worse than Abe Nomura, but I'm really, really just happy it is so high. Look, it's top 10, it gets its own page. Yes, dude! Like, this wasn't a show people were massively hyped for, you know? I was barely hyped for it. I was interested. I knew it would be great when I heard about it and I saw the card, but I wasn't counting down the days. I wasn't there the moment the stream started. Someone had to tell me it was even happening. And yeah, I don't think this would have been on most people's radars. And here it is. It's number eight. That's so sick. 388 total points, 47 votes. What? <laughs> That's so cool. 13 people had it as their match of the year. Myself included. Well deserved. So, so happy that it's up here. Um, yeah. I, 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 I can't even like muster up the cynicism to be mad that it's not number one or top five or whatever. I am just thrilled that this match with two wrestlers who I thought had amazing years got this much attention, enough attention to bring it into the top eight uh, of the year from a bunch of, from people who, I don't know, maybe this was their first time seeing it. I don't know. Okay, I'm not trying to say that people don't know Abe or 
the more hour that I'm gatekeeping them or whatever the hell, I'm so glad it left its target audience and more than enough people saw it and decided that it was worth their time and worth voting for. I'm immensely pleased by this result. Uh, this is this is just me taking a little bit of a victory lap um, because it was such a great experience seeing it in the moment as it was happening and then the rest of the world waking up, literally, literally because of the time zone, waking up and seeing it as well. It, what a great experience as a wrestling fan and someone who writes uh, about wrestling. One of my favorite things to happen all decade. We are the Fighting Detectives. God bless them. Match of the year. Moving on. Where were we? Oh, God. I'm losing myself. <laughs> Here we go. Number seven. Tatsuya Naito versus Will Ospreay. Now... <laughs> This feels like <laughs> this feels like list. I just said I wasn't gonna get mad. <laughs> this is the sort of list construction that I'm sure people will be like, "Oh, Joseph's gonna be so pissed." I get it, dude. It's VOW. This is New Japan has been the go-to promotion for this voter base since basically its creation. You know. And Tetsuya Naito versus Will Ospreay got a lot of hype. I saw the hype. And I thought that it was somewhat earned. I think it's a great match. I'm not trying to take anything away from it. I do think it's a great match. It is the best Will Ospreay performance of the year. Up there with the Mike Bailey one. This one may be a shade better. Um, certainly the best I saw of Naito all year. Um, I did like this better than the G1 Climax. So I think that sort of arrangement that this is over that is warranted and earned. And yeah, uh, I think it's great. All those clips you've seen of like the reversals of the Destino um, or the Stormbreaker turned into the Hurricane Rana. Oh, sick. It's, it's really good. It is. It really is. So you have to give credit where it's due. And it is very much due in that particular instance um yeah great match i can't <sighs> having it over the fighting detectives though <laughs> i'm not even laughing because people had that opinion all right that's not what's happening here i'm just laughing at how it shook out on the list where it's sort of like uh, two wrestlers I don't really love over uh, something I loved very deeply, okay? Um, I'm really, really not trying to single anyone out or their ballots. I just think it's funny. This is how the numbers came out. Okay. Number six. Hangman Page versus John Moxley. I'm pretty sure this is the Texas Death Match. Let's find out to be sure. But I'm, I'd be shocked if it wasn't. There you go. Yeah, the Texas Death Match. Awesome match. Uh... I don't think it was in my... Was it in my top 10? Probably. <laughs> uh, it was a great match. The best uh, AEW Texas death match of the year. But we'll talk about that a little more later. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, capper to the best feud of the year? Genuinely think so. Um, obviously, I have an emotional connection to Eddie and Claudio. But the way it was booked was a little less than ideal. Something like Mox versus Hangman Page was really much more precise and clean in execution they didn't really have any space for the rivalry to lull so that's why it felt so urgent and heated for basically that entire three to five month stretch where this played out 73 votes which is pretty fucking cool three first place votes had them at their match of the year this is one of the ones where i would not be mad at all if you said it was match of the year uh i had my preferences but that one totally valid pick um, a totally valid pick that I could agree with and wouldn't argue too much about. There are many valid picks, but some I would argue more with. There we go. Number five, Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. Yep, the Danielson dream run after breaking his arm was excellent. Um, I have spoken in the past about how much I love the original Danielson Sabre match for how charming that little botch is. 
in the middle, how it turns into a uh, two out of three falls. But this one is just them sort of at the peak of their powers, um, bringing all their abilities to a larger stage. And they delivered on that. I talked about it more in my year-end video, uh, so I won't dwell on it too much here. Number four, MJF versus Brian Danielson. Yeah, of of the things in the top ten, this is the one I would quibble with the most but uh, it is another case of yeah i did see the hype i saw people say they loved it i saw people say five stars and match of the year so it's not a shock to see it up here and i'm not even really that mad that it's up here just because i did see so much of it but this is the first match in like sort of the top 10 where i would actively call it bad <laughs> I did not care for it I did not care for the concept that they were going for which means it was already kind of broken in my brain in my brain before the bell even rang and the action didn't do much to sort of assuage those issues and those fears um, and just on a personal note da Danielson tapping to MJF come on come on okay come Come on. If I ever needed reminding that wrestling was fake. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's a personal thing. And yeah, not my fave. But I did see, I did see in the moment all the people going crazy for it. So not a surprise. None of these are a surprise in the way that like Lucha Bros, Young Bucks felt like a surprise where that one felt like it blindsided me. Like, where did this hype suddenly come from? Because it felt like I had been insulated from it for so long. Um, stuff like this, it's like, yeah, I, I saw the people going crazy for it, and I totally expected it to be here. Number three, Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Adam Page is a great match. It is wonderful. It is one of my favorite Swerve Strickland matches ever, basically. Um, but it does lose a little bit, just a little bit, going back and rewatching it. Uh, I don't care for the interferences, although they maybe weren't as bad as I had first thought. But it, 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 there are some structure issues towards the end. There are multiple points where I kind of go, okay, you could have ended there and the point would have been made. Or things like it getting a little bit repetitious, like Nana always dragging Swerve back onto his feet. That, that spot repeated like twice in a way where I thought it sort of diminished the second time that it was done. But... Hanger spat the man's blood out. And that's never not fucking sick. <laughs> it rules. Uh, like, I get it, man. I get it. That's not something you see on mainstream American wrestling TV. And when it does happen, it's a shock to the system. It feels like something momentous enough to be celebrated. And I was up there with people. I thought this was like a top 10-ish match of the year for quite a long time. It was only like revisiting everything that sort of changed my mind on it uh but yeah not mad that it's up there uh fully expected it to be uh and then oof, number two in is the forbidden door match will osprey versus kenny omega and the match of the year which i had seen before like doing this whole thing that i'm recording i had seen it when it came out the match of the year is will osprey versus kenny omega january 4th in the tokyo dome so i might as well talk about these two together because i have such <laughs> I have such wildly separate opinions about the two because the June match in Forbidden Door I think is bad. Um, I do think it's bad, which is weird considering they're still the same wrestlers who had the Tokyo Dome match, which I think is great. <laughs> like, I'm... I don't know how many people voted... To, for me to do the VOW reaction to see me like get mad at picks. I, I think that there's a certain factor of that in seeing me do this. But this one is not like infuriating or uh, baffling in the way that Lucha Bros Young Bucks was. This one, I get it. Not only is it like within the general style that the VOW voter base has enjoyed since its inception, um, it features two people who are uh, 
faves of the voter base. Will Ospreay and Kenny Omega are highly celebrated in this particular space of the internet. And the Tokyo Dome match, it rules. It does. It has its flaws. It has its flaws in that I don't like how Will Ospreay structures matches. I don't like the way he plans out his comebacks. I spoke in my review about the spot where he, he makes his comeback after Kenny's just owning him for the first half of the match. And he misses the os cutter on the apron. And Kenny stomps the table through him. And then he just sort of pops up and starts punching Kenny. Yeah, I... I don't care for that particular spot, but it's one spot in like 20 minutes of Will Ospreay dying, which fucking rules. That's great. That's a wonderful genre of match. Not even not even because I dislike Will Ospreay, but because Will Ospreay is a great bumper. And he really throws himself into making Kenny's offense look devastating the DDT into the exposed turnbuckle having his head bashed into the um into the ringside table it looks excellent uh he gets a good bleeder going it's not like it's not like a gusher or anything but he gets some good color it stains his blonde hair it looks excellent and he's just dying <laughs> If you're not a Will Ospreay fan, which I don't count myself as, it's exactly what you want. It's just him being grossly beaten down by Kenny Omega. And that was another thing I loved about the match too, is because I have been so down on Kenny Omega through this particular decade, seeing him sort of tap into the energy that made me a fan of him in the late 2010s, seeing him sort of reclaim that power in the Tokyo Dome. It felt like coming home. It really did. And it, it, it was such a powerful experience. You can go back on Twitter and see the receipts. I'm not just making this up because it was number one on VOW. I was losing my mind in real time. I was saying things like, oh, Kenny's tasting that Tokyo Dome air. And it... I, uh, there's something about it. When it hits his bloodstream, something awakens. And this was a powerhouse of a performance from him. The kind of thing where if I had not seen it otherwise, I would have been like... If I didn't have my faves and this was the only match of 2023 I had seen, I would be like, is Kenny Omega just like the best wrestler in the world again? That's how highly I hold his performance in this match. The Forbidden Door match? Not for me. Not for me. And that's because... That's innately because of the switch of the dynamic. Uh, Will Ospreay controls the Forbidden Door match. And I don't think Will Ospreay is as good a wrestler as Kenny Omega. I just don't. And it's also far more meandering in terms of runtime. It is longer. It's... Um, it has more weird twists that feel excessive, like Don Callis' interference, the screwdriver, debuting the Tiger Driver only for it to be a kick out. Uh, you know, just, just a lot of small things that where I was able to enjoy enough of it for like the first 10, 15 minutes, but then they just started making me, making decisions that had me like, Okay, okay, what was what was that for, I guess? And I know what story they're trying to tell. Will Ospreay is getting his revenge. He's surpassing Kenny Omega with the help of one of Kenny Omega's enemies. I understand the kayfabe story they're telling. I'm saying that executing that in practice led to a match I did not like. Um, but a lot of people did like it. And I know that they liked it. Uh, so I'm... Yeah, this 2023 VOW Match of the Year list, very few surprises for me personally. Uh, I realized I didn't end up saying uh, Athena versus Willow Nightingale from the ROH TV tapings. Uh, was it really just the death before the... Yeah, it's only the pay-per-view one. That would make sense. More people would have seen the pay-per-view one, but I'm very firmly of the belief that the one on the TV taping is easily their best one. Uh, I'm shocked more people didn't rank the the rest of the trilogy, actually. 
uh, that's sort of surprising to me. Well, there you go. Athena, I get it, though. The pay-per-view one is the one with the most eyes on it. It's going to have the most attention. I'm trying to think if there were any notable omissions that I'm sort of, like, blanking out on that I'm surprised didn't make it. Um, maybe if I take a quick glance at what my top 20 was, I would have a better idea. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, this is about the list I expected. These are the matches that got the most hype in 2023. It was just a matter of... Uh, what order they ended up in on the list. Um, I think the fact that I submitted a ballot that didn't even have some of my favorites up here, I think that sort of speaks to me just like, it is what it is. Like that, those chips will fall where they're gonna fall. Um, my vote regardless. And uh, I thought it was a better use of the vote to get uh, lesser known stuff like Dan versus Nicole from Dusk Pro on there. Um, but this is not a, this is not a, I am not shocked. I guess I've said that a million times in this video, but it bears repeating that this is not the same situation as the 2021 VOW uh, list. It's such a win. It really is. Because if you look at the top 10, it's such a win that We Are The Fighting Detectives got on there. Because if you look at all the matches from the top 10, it's the one that appeared on the fewest ballots. But it wasn't even the lowest ranked. Which speaks to how highly it was regarded by the people who voted for it. It was only on 21% of the ballots. And it ended up at number 8. By contrast, match of the year was on at least 50% of the ballots. And uh, number two was at 54%. Number one, the Tokyo Dome match, 72%, basically. But we got to number eight with 21. <laughs> Those 21, they're my people. <laughs> oh, thank you to the 47 of you who voted the We Are The Fighting Detectives uh, match. Uh, I'm so pleased. I'm, I'm really so pleased by that. Like, that is my main takeaway from this list. Uh, so I'm sorry if you guys wanted something, like, angrier or more cynical, but I, I'm just thrilled about this particular one. Yeah, 72% is crazy, but not unexpected. Um, it's sort of... Osprey Omega is the kind of match where most people, even the detractors of these two wrestlers, they all agree it was at least good. And most of them will tell you that this was like better than their average output. And so given that there's people who are just head over heels for both of those guys, yeah, man, I'm 70%, that makes all the sense it really does um i'm not mad at it as a number one match of the year list especially given voices voices of wrestling's match of the year history the sort of president they've set in the past there you go um i'm sorry i wasn't more mad and you're welcome if this was more complimentary than you're expecting and uh, for those of you in the middle, you're just with me. You're just with me. You're just taking it at face value. There you go. That was the VOW top 100 of the list. Um, again, I want to thank everybody for getting me to 20,000 subscribers. That it's incredibly meaningful to me. You guys are the absolute best. And of course, allow me to send an especially big thank you to all of my subscribers over on Kofi. Thank you to one-time supporters in Maggie, Duke Nukem 3DO, Nathan, Wansi Gonzalez, Michael, Hugh Alexander, Kali, Nicholas Anderson, Alex C, Verse the Cop, Gus, Aussie Assault, Corey Bailey, Clean Quality, Shoeman, Projecting Who, and Jacob York. And of course, thank you to all my monthly subscribers in James Draper, Captain Jack Heartless, Eddie Roberts, Jacob Dickens, Chick Fritz, Spiders in My Bed, Timothy R. Buchner, In the Lane, Peter Vinison, Kid King Pin, Joe Humphreys, Christopher Jackson, Four Pillars of Hell, Sean Emily, Mason Rollison, Carve Cutta, Jacob VR, Merch Table Mafia, Ando Commando, Vibe MD, Christoph, Quentin Besnehard, Christopher Richards, Dom G, Austin Shermer, Wrestling Playlists, Woo, Francois DeBuck, Justin Roberge, 
Secret Cow 42 and Matt Wasung. You guys are truly champions. Thank you so much for supporting my work in this way. Uh, it means the world to me. Thank you for getting me to 20K. You guys are awesome. Thank you and have a good one.